you go. Over there, it's a massive ferry. We'll see some of them later. When we swim past. So, we don't start from here. We're meeting the guy whose boat it is, and then he's taking us up somewhere around here, depending on where he wants to start from. Oh, there's Kev's dad, there's my dad. There's our boat. There's Chris's mum, there's Kevin, no, there's Chris. <laughs> there we go. We're just going out to the start now. Boiled up, baby. Should I pretend this is France? Yes. Nous sommes ici. Right, so he swims to there, gets out, and then that's the official start. And then we go over there. Right, he's right up. Yeah, we started. We started from some fire down there. Oops. Our first swimmer in the water is Kevin. Doing a fine job. He's been going for oh, just over 10 minutes. Um, on the 15th of September of this year, uh, myself, Alex Burrell and Chris Brook, uh, we swam across the English Channel in a three-person relay. Um, we started talking about it in about February. Um, when organizing it and uh, we got everything booked in about March and we mainly did it to raise money for Help for Heroes and also just to do it as an accomplishment and something that we all wanted to do for a while. So. Yeah. Um, well we had to go through the Channel Swimming and Pilot Federation mm -hmm. and we had to get a pilot which is the guy who takes you across the channel and we had to get a medical exam and examined to uh, make sure that we were physically fit enough to do it. And then once all that was cleared with the French Board Authority, we were good to go. 2K, something like that. France is over there. Kevin's there. The CB's getting ready to go. It's not a phrase we often hear, actually, that <laughs> Luckily. So the plan is, Alex is going to leap in and overtake Kevin. And we'll then fish Kevin out and let Alex yeah. make his way towards France. Great job, Kevin. Well done, mate. His legs. And that's how far we've come. 
over there. So we're coming towards second transition. So the boys have brought us, Kevin and Alex have brought us that far. Alex is still within 100 metres of the boat. Where is he? There he is. Sorry. CV ready to jump in behind. training at a lake in Raysbury called Herring Lake and Kev knows the guy that owns it so we train there once a week maybe twice and then how long before, a couple of weeks before we did the swim we did an open water race at Bray Lake in Windsor just to check like last minute checks if we could do it all but yeah no I mean it was different but it wasn't like we didn't have the fitness it was just getting used to the cold. And there were uh, quite a few jellyfish especially on my second stint. I uh, came across a quite nice big shoal with them and got stung quite a few times. Yeah, um, and, uh, there was a, a fishing boat. I think it was off <laughs> while you were in the water. No, it was while you were in the water. Was it? Some, some fishing boat came out. Yeah, it was like, when CV was yeah, in the water. Yeah. Oh, some yeah. fishing boat came like herring towards our boat and we thought it was going to keep coming. Yeah, all I can remember is this sort of like chug chug, almost like a helicopter road to go around and I look back and all the sea is this massive business of fishing shit like right behind me. But it, like, in, it, uh, he's just got two planes. And then, like, when you're in the water, you can't really see anything. But like, when Kev was in the shipping lane, there were these huge liners like in front and behind. That's why I don't know if you saw them. Yeah, you could see them when you breathe. Every time you look over, you see this big ship coming. Yeah, huge. We've yeah. got some pictures like a massive oil tanker, yeah. like within 100 meters ish yeah. above. Uh, it was an hour each, so yeah. So it went Kev, me, Chris, and we did that three times, and then he finished it off. Um, so, well, we had about 1.8 nautical miles left when I went in, and he told me that'd take about 40, which it took about 40 minutes yeah, but, to do that final stretch. So it was either going to be me or Alex. So yeah. I didn't want Alex. I don't think Alex wanted to go in again. No, by the time you finished the third hour, it was just kind of like, please don't make us get back in cold. It's so cold. I can't even tell you how cold the sea was, especially on like the second and third. And once like, it got dark. It, uh, oh, to like yeah. 15.8, 15.9. It's freezing. So, so how, how much did you swim in darkness then? Uh, it my went down on my, so on my third one with like... You know, we did three hours. So yeah. You did an hour, you did an hour, I did a little under an hour. Yeah, yeah. So, no, so we finished at... I can't remember what we yeah. It was 10.40 French time, 9.40. And the sun went down at about half seven. <laughs> yeah, with the, an observer to make sure it was official. But that was also the pilot's first mate because we couldn't get an observer from mm. the Federation. So, so obviously there's like rules like you're not allowed to jump in front of them and take over. So we have to like jump in behind them and just swim off in a straight line to pick the other guy up. And do you, do you have to wish you back? Yeah, yeah. So we, we were lucky. We had the fastest boat that they had, that the Charleston Federation owned. So it was two hours back, and then so we got home at like what three in the morning? Yeah, yeah three in the morning. So that was the hardest part, and then we just take things for a couple of days. Yeah. Well, it wasn't meant to be, we weren't meant to be going off until the 18th at the earliest. Uh, we got the um, call at 5 in the morning, yeah. saying get down to Dover as soon as possible, the tides are good. And uh, we, were, we were on the road probably at 9 in the morning. Yeah. So we, we got a slot because a guy, our pilot had a guy the night before that pulled out because he yeah. had seasickness. So he did like what, three hours swimming and then stopped? Yeah. Yeah. It was a six person relay. Was it? Yeah. Uh, right. Not even all of them swam. No, yeah. they just got sick on the boat without before even getting into the water. Mm -hmm. so. so he called Kev at five in the morning. Chris picked up his phone straight away. I slept in for half seven because yeah. my phone didn't work. There's a season. Yeah, every in between August and the end of September yeah. is when the season. And there's a couple of days. Yeah, a couple of days that dry. Not every. Well, it's, it's, it's just because it's warmest. Yeah. So the sea warms up over the summer because obviously it doesn't get warm like that, like lakes do. Yeah. So you, it, you leave it over the summer. And it's warmest in September. It also means that the days are longer, so that you do less swimming in the dark. Mm. That's more days Sorry. Oh yeah, and uh, it, it's not. 
that's not the most common thing to do. There's, I know there's a fact that more people have climbed Mount Everest um, than a summer challenge. Really? Yeah. Successfully, yeah. More people have successfully completed. The actual course you take across the channel isn't dead straight. So it's about 21 miles, dead straight. Yeah. But you end up doing sort of like an S shape down and up because of the tides. Obviously they push you. Mm. So you end up swimming sort of close to 40 yeah. miles. What are we doing? 40 to 50. We're not sure they're that distance. Mm. But it's a lot longer than the actual miles. It takes like over an hour to get warm. So you, we do one hour in the water, two hours out, and it takes what, like over an hour to get warm? Mm. And then you just try and get on energy, get some food in you. And then you're pretty much shit. Yeah. Yeah. And was there, when you knew your turn coming up, did your heart sink or were you yeah. sort of. Yeah. yeah. For the first time, it was really exciting. But then for the second hour, you just thought, oh. Third hour was the worst. Yeah. Yeah. What about the fourth? <laughs> I, I got told in my third hour that if I didn't sprint for the whole hour, I would, the, tide, the, the tide would take us down yeah. past the cape, we'd have to go against the tide, yeah. and it'd take us another four hours instead of 30 minutes. Swim to America. That might be a bit hopeful. Are we doing anything? Uh, maybe. 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 Yeah. maybe next year we've all finished school, but not for a while. So how much did you raise, by the way, for It's help? still going up. We've got about three grand at the moment. But I think we've got more, like, Stevie's got to send up some checks. Kev's got money from his school. I've still got money from his school. We'll try and get about 4,000 maybe more, but it's kind of...